Welcome to the Finding Dad Bod, where my dad, Coach Alex Van Houten, plus his 14 years of experience to work for you. You should listen to him. Here's Pity Beast Mode. Who knows who we could be if we could become 1% better every single day. What's up, guys? This is Alex Van Houten with Defining Dad Bod. I hope you're doing super well. You're listening to Season 3, Episode 16 of Defining Dad Bod, where we're continuing our supplement series and talking about supplement quality. Thus far in our series, we've covered that supplements are stupid, and we have to be smarter than them and even the companies that make them in order to make great decisions about what supplements we might make a part of our health and fitness journey. We've covered many supplements so far, both the research and my experience working with them in the last 14 years of my training career. And while I hope this series has been valuable to you, the most common question I've gotten so far is, okay, okay, Alex, I understand. I should be taking a probiotic. But which one specifically do you recommend? Send me a link. This episode is intended to do two things. One, compile the links from the previous episodes and a very specific resource for you so you can just point and click at what I recommend to my clients. Those resources are in the show notes below if you're on iTunes. If you're here on YouTube, you'll find it in the description. And if you're on our webpage, scroll down a little bit and you'll find them right there. But the second purpose of this episode is if you'd like to explore different options than the ones that I generally recommend to clients. I've given you a few guidelines and a philosophy to help you weed out the quality from the garbage. There are a lot of supplements in the world, and if your goal is to see progress in your health and fitness, most of them are a big giant waste of your money. I have a piece of housekeeping and some food for thought for you before we get started. First, a huge thanks to Jeff GT9 for his five-star review of the Defining Dad Bod podcast. Jeff says, Alex's origin story is an inspiring one, where life pushed him into his calling of supporting the world in one of the most valuable wealths we can embody, the wealth of health. He's a genuine, compassionate, wise, straight shooter who will walk alongside you and sharpen your physical and mental iron along the way. He has his life and health challenges like each of us, and can help guide you through those as they come up. I challenge you to connect with Alex and experience why he can and will do more for your health than anyone or any other program that you've tried in the past. Punching emoji, heart emoji, flexing emoji. Jeff, thanks for that, brother. I really appreciate your vote of confidence, and I appreciate you taking the time to tell others about it on iTunes. On that note, if you've been considering working with me to make some progress on your own health and fitness journey, you can get $25 off our Jumpstart program until the end of the month. Go to definingdadbod.com slash shop slash jumpstart. And at checkout, type in the code CAVEMAN2020. That's C-A-V-E-M-A-N 2020 to get $25 off our Jumpstart week. It'd be an honor to be in your corner and help you jumpstart towards your health and fitness goals before the holidays get underway. That's definingdadbod.com slash shop slash jumpstart. Type in promo code CAVEMAN2020 and get 25% off. And get $25 off your Jumpstart Week. And now for a food for thought this week. The coming months have weighed heavily on my mind for a number of reasons. The political climate, a looming flu season, with the additional danger of a new pandemic, and a basic dislike for the shorter days, colder temperatures, and dimmer waking hours that winter seems to entail. To be honest, it feels a lot like being in school again, knowing that there's this big giant project coming up and you would really prefer that it just didn't happen at all. I'll work on my mood, I promise. But amidst the things that I'm concerned about is the health and fitness of my family members. I know many who aren't eating like I know they should. I know others who will readily admit that they haven't exercised in a while. And with the research for a recent show that I did, I'm convinced that every single one of them are deficient in vitamin D. So I had a funny thought that grew into something I'm going to munch on for a while, and I hope you will too. What if, being weird health nuts that we are, in an attempt to help educate and make our families healthier, We stock stuffings with vitamin D, magnesium, or even some sardines this Christmas. What if we outright asked the friends and family who are closest to us about the one step we think would be most important for them right now? Not in a judgmental way, but in a caring way. What if, because you did so, your loved ones were a little better equipped to fight off infections that came their way this season? And heck, maybe because you asked, their life is much better in 2021. I shot a text to my in-laws. I shot a text to my in-laws, my brother and sisters and even a few friends, and I said, hey, random question, are you taking a vitamin D supplement right now? Most asked me why I asked, and then we could have a great conversation about it. And others I was very proud of, because they've already taken that preparatory step for themselves this season. 
I don't care what you ask, or how you present it, but what I hope to bring to your attention today is how frequently, or infrequently, we're actually having conversations with the people that we care about that support their healthy actions for themselves. I know in my circles, and even those of my clients, many health conversations revolve around us. What am I doing for my workouts? What am I doing for my nutrition? I wonder what would happen if with an open mind and a caring heart, we asked the people in our life about one specific thing that we're passionate about, that we're trying to get better at, and that we hope they would benefit from too, just to get the conversation rolling. At best, maybe the people in your life pick up a habit or two that you've rubbed off on them, and at worst, they'll appreciate that you cared enough to ask. I think the world could use some more of that right now. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Shoot me a message at Coach Al at DefiningDadBot.com. That's your food for thought today. I hope it gives you something to munch on. And now, without further ado, let's dive into this conversation about supplement minimalism and choosing high-quality supplements. So the first thing I want to talk about is a supplement philosophy called supplement minimalism. I don't know if you Google that if you're going to find what I'm about to talk about. It's something that I've developed over the years of working with clients. So hang with me here. Supplement minimalism is the idea that when you start a training program, you change something about your exercise, you shake up your homeostasis, you're going to be in a stage called the alarm phase. We'll talk about that more in a second. In the alarm phase, your body needs an amazing amount of resources in order to start adapting in a good way. And that being said, this is the period of the program where supplementation may be a very important part of getting what you want out of your exercise program. Mainly because it's very difficult to make consistent changes to nutrition and lifestyle, but it's not nearly as difficult to make consistent changes to your exercise program. I'll give you a for instance. If I say, hey, go to the gym and do cardio three days this week. And you say, oh, it's what I do. And I say, I don't care. Just go and sweat for 30 minutes. I don't care what you do. So you go to the gym three times this week and uh, you sweat for 30 minutes and you go, okay, great. That wasn't too bad. I was a little sore, but it felt kind of good. That's not a huge deal, okay? You have three things you need to mark off this week. You need to rem remember to bring your gym shoes. You have to bring a change of clothes. You have to make it to the gym or hit the trail or whatever it is that you do for that 30 minutes of cardio. Not a big deal. But if I say, hey, I need you to get to bed at 10 p.m. tonight and wake up at 6 a.m., tomorrow morning and I need you to get seven servings of vegetables in your day every single day for the next week, then implementing that is way harder and way more challenging for most people than actually getting to the gym three times this week. It's been my experience that getting seven servings of veggies Every single day this week means going to the grocery store once or twice more than usual, means prepping those veggies, means cooking those veggies, means stomaching those veggies, eating them before they go bad, that kind of stuff. Getting to bed at a decent time often means getting your spouse on board with the new bedtime, often means shutting off Netflix an hour earlier than usual, often means... Changing your bedtime routine so that your body is ready for sleep at 10 p.m. Nutrition and lifestyle changes take a lot of time, a lot of energy, and take an immense commitment on your part to being consistent with those changes before you ever see any results from those changes. Whereas for exercise, as soon as you do a week of 30 minutes of cardio if you haven't been doing it or an hour of weightlifting if you haven't been doing it or whatever it is, as soon as you make that change, you enter what's called the alarm phase, and your body starts demanding more resources in order to adapt to that change. And so, supplement minimalism is the idea that in the very beginning of a program, supplements are very important, so that while you get your exercise program under wraps, you get the adaptations that you wanted to get from it without having to wait six months while you change your nutrition and lifestyle to match. Supplements can fill that gap for you. The other part of supplement minimalism as a philosophy is that after you've gone through the alarm phase and you've gotten your nutrition and your lifestyle to match what you need in order to make exercise adaptations, 
then my goal as a professional is to reduce the amount of supplements that you take considerably so that your lifestyle and your nutrition are providing everything that your body needs to adapt to your normal daily life and maintain homeostasis. This is a very important philosophy to me because when I was a kid, my first experience with supplements was I had a instructor and a mentor that I really looked up to and I went to eat dinner at their house one night. I was pretty young, probably seven or eight. And with dinner, he pulled out this basket of like 30 different herbal supplements and proceeded to one by one, take every single supplement that was in that basket, saying that some of them helped with vitality, some of them helped with aging, some of them kept you from getting sick. I'm not really sure. All I know is that even as a child, I remember thinking, well, if you're taking 30 of those, how do you know if any one of them is doing you any good? And when I was a kid, I saw Space Jam, which <laughs> if you're a 90s kid, you remember when Michael Jordan put water in a water bottle and gave it to Bugs Bunny with the label Mike's Special Stuff. And when the Looney Tunes drank that, man, they got all buff and stuff, but it was just water. It was inside them the whole time, which is a child's first exposure to the placebo effect. So supplement minimalism for me is a philosophy that allows me to use supplements in an intelligent and scientific way to help clients through the alarm phase and through the phases of change of lifestyle and nutrition so that exercise can still be beneficial, still be adaptive, still be powerful, but I'm not using supplements in a way that's going to require my client to have a basket full of 30 things when they're 60 years old at the table mentoring young kids on how they need to take ginkgo, otherwise they're going to end up with the flu today. So there's my philosophy when training clients for supplements. I hope it makes sense to you and it's something you can adopt intelligently for yourself. Use supplements during an alarm phase when you change something about your training program to get the adaptations you need while your lifestyle and nutrition catch up. What's really important is that when you're working out your supplement list, that it makes a lot of sense for what condition you're in, what your nutrition and lifestyle look like and whatnot. Perhaps you eat so much fish that you won't have fish oil on your list. Fantastic. Perhaps you never travel and so probiotics don't need to be in your pantry. Or maybe you don't really get outside in the summer either and so you'd be taking vitamin D in the summer and the winter as opposed to me just taking it in the winter. And maybe you find that creatine makes you retain a whole bunch of water and feel puffy and so creatine's not gonna be on your list whether or not you're on the strength and power phase. What matters is that whatever you take has a reason and whatever you take is not trying to stand in for nutrition and exercise. So I hope it's pretty plain to you so far that I'm not looking for supplements to stand in for good nutrition, good lifestyle, and good exercise habits. Supplements can't do that for you. But everybody's looking for a magic pill and so marketing out there will tell you that, hey, if you just take this pill or if you just do this pre-workout or if you just do this shake every single morning, then you're going to have six-pack abs, you're going to feel great, you're going to be at the body fat percentage you want, and it all comes in this little bottle, no other change is necessary. That is a lie. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And the truth about health and fitness changes, which I actually talked quite a bit about in a previous podcast... Changing yourself for the better requires time, energy, consistency, and intelligence. And none of those things are required to take a pill from the bottle. So that's all well and good, Alex. I can hear you saying, but how do I know what supplements I should be taking? Well, the first thing you need to know about choosing supplements is that not all supplements are created equal. I could say the same thing about food. If I had 100 calories of Twinkie in one hand and 100 calories of spinach in the other, and I said, which one's better for you? You would obviously pick the spinach. Even my child knows that spinach is better for you than Twinkies. Twinkies taste pretty dang good, but spinach has more phytonutrients, obviously more protein, more fiber, and those are going to have really beneficial impact on your metabolism than the MSG, the processed carbs, and God knows what else is in a Twinkie, right? So quality matters more than quantity when it comes to supplementation. This is really important because if you're going to take a supplement, I want you to get the actual benefit from taking that supplement rather than just buying something that you're going to pee or poop out, right? So how do you know what is quality versus quantity? 
I've got a nice easy list for you when it comes to crappy supplements. The first thing you need to look for is sexy marketing. That's usually a dead giveaway that whatever's in that bottle is not worth your money. If there's six pack abs on it, some dude flexing, some chick in a sports bra or whatever, and they're sweaty and they're in shape, that supplement is likely full of garbage. Why? Well, they spent way more money getting a model to pose for that and buying rights to that photo than they did actually formulating the supplement and paying for the quality of the formulation itself. So look for sexy marketing. If it's there, don't buy it. It's not worth your money. Second, how long has that supplement company been around under the same name? This is really important. The most trusted supplement companies on my list are things like Thorn Research, Designs for Health, and all of them are supplement companies that have been around for 30 years or more which means they haven't had to fight a whole bunch of lawsuits. They've made a quality product that in the market people are continuing to buy what they put out, which is always a good indication that they're getting good reviews in the market. I mean, think about it. Would you buy something from somebody who's only been in business for about a year and has had several complaints under their belt in that time? Or would you prefer to buy something from somebody who's been in the business for 30 years and has a lot of happy customers? So how long has the company been around? Great way to know whether or not it's a quality supplement. And then the last thing is look on the label and look for the words proprietary blend. Now for a high quality company that's been around for a while, they'll use proprietary blend in order to hide how many milligrams of one ingredient or another ingredient they've added to make this magical concoction happen, which is fine. That's, uh, that's the case with Douglas Labs Relora Plus, for instance, where they mix two different herbs together and they'd prefer that other people in the industry not be able to do it just like they do. And that's fine. But if there's the words proprietary blend and there are three or more ingredients in that proprietary blend list, then that proprietary blend list might as well say magical pixie dust because low quality supplement companies use the words proprietary blend for two reasons. One, because they legitimately do not know how much of each ingredient ended up in your canister. This is particularly true of pre-workout complexes. So if anybody's experimented with pre-workouts that have sexy packaging and proprietary blends with you know, 20 ingredients in them, you know that from one canister to another, you get a little more of a buzz, a little more hype, a little more focus, but it's not a consistent experience. And that's because that company literally has no idea how much caffeine, how much beta alanine, how much citrulline malate or whatever else they've put in there has ended up in your canister. The other reason that crappy supplement companies use the words proprietary blend is because there is no third party testing in order to ensure that what they're claiming is in their product is actually there. So under the words proprietary blend, they could say, well, there's you know 3000 milligrams of our proprietary blend in here and it probably has this, 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 and this in it, who knows? So that's how you tell if the supplement company is kind of crappy. So how do you know if a supplement company is high quality? Well, in short, you get what you pay for. Most of the good quality supplements in the world are a little more expensive than the crappy stuff you'll find at the drugstore. For instance, the fish oil that I buy is about five times more expensive than the fish oil gummies at Target. Now, the fish oil that I buy is GMP stamped, which means good manufacturing process. Somebody has actually been to that facility, tested it, and seen that... You know, they're not dropping rats in the vat with your fish oil. Second, it's third party tested, which means the supplement company that I purchased from actually pays somebody else to come into their facility and to test their product to ensure that the amounts that they report is in there is actually in there. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the fish oil that I'm taking has 360 milligrams of EPA in it, which is pretty fantastic three of those capsules in a day, and I know I'm getting more than the recommended one gram of EPA, which is a therapeutic dosage of fish oil, which can improve depression symptoms, can improve energy output, which can improve insulin sensitivity, and a number of other things. The fish oil at Target doesn't say anything about EPA because they don't have third-party testing to tell how much of what omega-3 oil is actually there. They report that there are 0.1 milligrams of fish oil per gummy. What's really funny to me about that is a therapeutic dosage of fish oil is at least 1,000 milligrams of EPA. Not just 1,000 milligrams of fish oil, but 1,000 milligrams 
of EPA, which in most cases is half and half. So you would actually have to take about 1,000 of those gummies to get even close to a therapeutic dosage of fish oil. Here's the kicker. There's one gram of sugar per gummy since high fructose corn syrup is the number one ingredient in a target gummy fish oil. So along with your 1,000 milligrams of fish oil, you've also gotten 1,000 grams of sugar, which can't be that great for you. So all that to say, you get what you pay for. Now, buying the most expensive supplement is not the uh, surefire way to get quality. Most good companies have a way of creating a great product and ensuring that that product is not too expensive for the population. So what specifically do you need to be looking for? You need to be looking for, one, a company that's been around 30 or more years. Second, you need to look for a GMP stamp, which means that the good manufacturing process has said that this product is manufactured in a facility that maintains good temperature, that maintains good cleanliness, that there are no foreign objects in the actual manufacturing process itself. Pretty powerful stamp. And then last but not least, you want to do some research about whether or not this supplement company is third-party tested. Do they spend some money on a third-party business to come ensure what they say is in their supplement is actually there? The last thing I want to say about quality versus quantity is that many people rightly note that the FDA doesn't really regulate the supplement industry. And so they take that as carte blanche to say all supplements are bad, I shouldn't be a part of taking them because they're unregulated. All I have to say to you is that currently FDA approved products include Twinkies, Ritalin, McDonald's hamburgers, and Arby's sauce. Just because it's regulated doesn't mean it's good for you. And the same thing could be said about supplements in reverse. Just because it's unregulated doesn't mean that there aren't good supplements that could help you out in the world today. In fact, I personally appreciate that the supplement industry is less regulated than Twinkies because it inspires people and professionals to do a lot more research before they put it in their body. And that's exactly what I want my clients to do before they start taking supplements. Understand, is this the right stuff for you? Is this supplement going to do what we expect it to do? Is there research and precedent to prove that? And three months from now, can we measure the progress you've made because of introducing the supplement to your life? When everything's regulated, like food, for instance, people tend not to spend so much time thinking before they just shove it in their body because they expect it to be fine and good and healthy for them. I'll grant you that FDA regulation of Twinkies ensures that you likely won't get food poisoning, but it certainly doesn't ensure that you won't develop type 2 diabetes because of your Twinkie problem. So now that I've talked about a decent supplement philosophy, the fact that supplements can't stand in for your nutrition and exercise, and how to tell the difference between a quality supplement company and a crappy supplement company, then where should you go to research what supplements might be worth taking? There's a fantastic website. I'll put the link in the description below. It's called examine.com. E-X-A-M-I-N-E dot com. It's a wonderful company who's taken the time to compile all of the available research out there about different supplements so that all you have to do is type in the product and it will list what studies have been done on the product as well as what effects you might find from it. So for instance, I just went to examine.com and I typed in fish oil. If I type in fish oil, then at the very top, there's a choice for fish oil. Go ahead and click that. Once you click that, it actually brings you to a summary page of all of the scientific evidence for fish oil and its effects on the body. As you scroll a little further down, there's a fantastic table that actually breaks down level of evidence, outcome, magnitude of effect, consistency of research results, and then the notes on those results. So having just typed in fish oil, the top few things that fish oil seems to have the most impact on, triglycerides. There's a strong effect of lowering triglycerides, and there are 44 studies that corroborate that finding. There's a strong level of evidence for the reduction of depression, a notable reduction in depression, and there are 23 studies with very high consistency that corroborate that information as well. And then just under that, there's a good amount of evidence that there is a minor reduction in ADHD in children. And there are nine studies that look specifically at fish oil's effects on ADHD on children. 
You can click these links, you can search through them, read the research if you care to. For my part, I've done enough research into examine.com that I very much trust the stuff they compile. And they've called fooey on a lot of the supplements I used to swear by, telling me that most of what I thought was happening is simply the placebo effect or Mike's juice from Space Jam. So if you're confused about what supplements you should be taking or somebody's recommended one to you and you'd like to research it further, please use examine.com to look into the research actually behind the supplement and what has actually been found as an outcome of taking it. Remember, I typed in fish oil here and examine.com is talking about lowering triglycerides. I need to buy a quality fish oil if I want to lower triglycerides. The target gummies aren't going to do the job for me. So I hope this talk has given you some perspective about supplements and some good tools that you can use to bring your health and fitness goals to the next level. Remember, be a supplement minimalist. Remember that supplements can't stand in for good nutrition and good exercise. And remember that quality matters more than quantity in the supplement world if you actually want any benefits from that. If this was good information for you, I hope you'll put it into practice and share it with your friends and make sure that everybody gets good information for helping them to be healthier, happier versions of themselves. This has been Alex Van Houten with Defining Dad Bod. Until next time, guys. Kick butt, take names. The free practical advice and conversations here remain unbought and unbiased thanks to the support of listeners just like you. If this episode has been helpful to you, please share it with somebody in your life who you know it will benefit. Then subscribe to the podcast and leave us a raving review to tell others what value Defining Dad Bod has brought to your health and fitness journey. And finally, if you want more Defining Dad Bod, consider joining our online community. We send a lot of free perks and resources your way, and I, Coach Alex, go live every month to talk through our listeners' health and fitness questions to make the practical science of this show applicable to everyday life. Everyone's welcome, and we'd love to have you. For more information about joining the inner circle or becoming a supporter of the Defining Dad Bod podcast, go to definingdadbod.com slash inner circle. That's definingdadbod.com slash inner circle.